Hey folks, welcome to your next assignment. Today I'm going to show you how to design buttons to make badge pins. The main skill that I want to show you today is how to use different types of selection tools. The truth is that we could make these buttons without using any selection tools, but then we wouldn't really be learning anything. So what you're looking at right now is the finished product. You're going to open up a blank Photoshop document that looks like this. If you're at Glenlawn, you may be using a three inch one that looks like this. This one doesn't have a background, but don't worry about it. You could create one or you don't actually necessarily need one. So to open this document, you're going to click on the file, Explorer. After you've downloaded Photoshop number three selections and buttons, this one right here, you're going to open up the existing Photoshop document, two by 25 inch button template, double click. Again, the Photoshop document that you may have may not have this background layer. And sometimes it's just easier to turn it off when we're doing certain edits. In addition to opening up this Photoshop template, it's also important that you open up the Photoshop number three button making layers and selections in the Word document. So this lesson, there's a lot of information. It can be a little bit dense. But the most important things that you need to do, I simplified and listed in these five steps. So if you forget what to do, click back and forth between Photoshop and the Word document. Let's go. I would like you to then place in bed one of the images I supplied. File embedded and there should be a folder called button example images and click on the Winnipeg Jets logo now you don't have to make Winnipeg Jets buttons but these are definitely images that need to be edited my suggestion is to use this image and practice the selection techniques on this and once you feel like you know what you're doing feel free to apply them to any image you'd like Okay, here we go. First tool, we are going to choose the elliptical marquee tool. Now, there's a chance that you may actually see the rectangular marquee tool. Remember, different tools can be nested. So you just hold down the left mouse button and choose elliptical marquee tool. The shortcut is N. I then want you to go to style and it, it'll be at normal set it to fixed ratio if it's on normal there's nothing sort of constraining the the proportions which makes your life a bit more difficult so your life's going to be easier by clicking on fixed ratio now you're just going to hold down the left mouse button and start to make a circle once the selection has been made if you hover over these flashing black lines we call these the marching ants if you hover over them and you see the white cursor that's going to allow you to move the selection but that's not quite accurate enough, so I'm going to hit Control D to deselect. That's very important. Now, if I go to the middle of the circle and hold down Alt, that's going to allow me to, from the center, make a circle that's going to be way more accurate. The next step is to rasterize the layer. If I were to just try to press Delete right now, you're going to get this prompt that says, could not complete your request because the smart object is not directly editable. Okay, all that means is that we need to rasterize the layer. Come here to the layers menu in the gray box, right click, rasterize layer. Now we can edit the pixels that are inside this selection. Delete, there we go. Except that's not what we want to do. We want to delete everything outside of the marching ants. So I'm going to hit Control Z undo. And with a selection tool chosen, I'm going to right click, select inverse. If that option's not coming up, if you have a different tool selected, you could always go select inverse. Now all that's done is now you see the marching ants on the outside. So everything between these marching ants and these marching ants will be removed when I hit delete on the keyboard. Bada bing, bada boom. Last step, control D. Now, if that seems like a lot, 
go to my Word document. Everything I just taught you is right here. So V for Move Tool, I'm going to select this layer, Control T to transform, and I'm going to start making it smaller. Now notice, we can't see this red circular line. Your design must exist within this regular line. All I need to do is take this layer and drag it below the actual design layer, and you can now see the red line there. Okay, there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Also, if you want to make micro adjustments, Z for zoom. Spacebar gives me this hand. And then I can just slowly but surely move it around. I can even use the, the arrows on the keyboard to do really small adjustments. Perfect. That's the first selection tool the elliptical marquee tool. So I simply place embedded another one of the Jets logo images into my file. And remember, you don't need to do this, but this is just a file I know that needs to be edited. For the next one, I'm gonna use the magnetic lasso tool. Shortcut is L. The magnetic lasso tool is good for irregular shapes, like this one. Another good example would be the human body or a human head. The advantages is that we can do a lot more refined selections to irregular shapes. It can be a little bit tricky to use, but basically I'm going to hit the mouse button and it's going to magnetically snap to these colored pixels. Every once in a while if I'm in a corner I may hit the button and what we do, we want to go quite slow with this. The disadvantage of this tool is it can be easy to mess up if you find yourself going off a little bit and it gets all messed up like this and you've lost all hope, we may need to restart the selection or get rid of this. To do that, all we have to do is press escape on the keyboard, which is in the top left-hand corner, escape, ESC, and I can start again. Here we go. I'm gonna do this faster than you should. But I don't wanna take too much time in this video making these selections. The other thing that I wanted to show you is if you maybe mess up just a little bit, oh, oh dear. If you hit backspace on the keyboard, it will get rid of all those mistakes you just made. So I'm gonna finish this selection and fast forward. As I finish this, what you need to know is to complete the selection, I have to go to the first box and it can be hard to see so I'll zoom in here but you want to click that first box and you see that little circle that appears gone appears gone when I see the little circle that means that I'm ready to complete my selection complete it same process right click rasterize layer right click select inverse delete control D And there we go. Control T and I can resize this. To fit inside the circle. And I'll just get rid of this later. I don't know why I did that. Make it a little bit smaller. With this layer selected too, I want to just show you. You can use an eraser tool. E, E's for the eraser tool. And you can change the size using the bracket keys that are just to the right of the P on the keyboard. And sometimes that can be a pretty quick way to get rid of your pixels as well. Magnetic lasso tool, there we go. Last but certainly not least, I'm gonna show you how to use the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool. These are pretty much the best selection tools, but again, it all sort of depends on the, the circumstances. I'm going to select this layer and also if I hold down alt and click on the eye that's going to make just this layer visible another little handy tool because we have a background that is such a different color it makes it very easy to choose the magic wand tool and just click these white pixels I'll rasterize the layer and the only difference is this time I don't need to do the select inverse because 
the white pixels that we want to get rid of are already selected. Press delete and bada bing bada boom. Now the one little disadvantage I want to make you aware of is that sometimes it's actually going to delete sections that we didn't want it to. So I'm going to undo and I'm just going to show you how we can avoid that. If I actually choose the quick selection tool, it's going to operate similar but in smaller sections. So as I hold down the left mouse button, it's going to sort of snap to the other white pixels and I can just hit delete as we go here. The image is already rasterized. So as I come close here, notice that I ended up deleting things that I didn't want to. If I come up here, I can actually subtract from a selection. Click on that. Or the easiest way is to hold down Alt again. Alt is our, our friend. And notice how when I do that, a subtraction symbol comes up. So now when I click on it, it's actually removing from my selection. So again, I don't, all I want to remove is these white pixels. Here we go. Back to the magic wand tool, select all these, delete. And that's pretty much it. So that's the basics of how to use all of those tools. Again, Start messing around with the Jets logo file that I gave you, but then you can make anything that you want. Heck, you can use text. You can combine images and text. My other suggestion is to do three designs and then copy and paste them or just duplicate them. And again, our good old friend Alt, if you hold down Alt with the move tool selected, you see how there's that black and white arrow there showing up? That's going to allow me to quickly duplicate the process. And now I'm ready to print. And you guys already know how to do that. Enjoy. Have fun.